Well, thank you, Representative Orlarski, and uh, thank you for having this panel. And I, I'm uh, pleased to be here with the, uh, my esteemed uh, colleagues and, and you know the, the two former chairmen and, and Matt as we're working through this. You know, America's needy families need good paying jobs and not more emergency spending and endless government checks. You know, the, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that we passed reduced poverty to a historic low, providing the highest wage gains for the lowest earning Americans and provided more jobs to choose from. Uh, right now, last things we, we need as Americans is to have higher taxes to help pay for uh, some untargeted uh, welfare without work pro policies that are being promoted by the Democrats. You know, 25 years ago, as we've talked about this, our country was facing a backlog of welfare cases, increased poverty and single parenthood and few jobs to go around. Uh, through a bipartisan effort, which the Republicans on Ways and Means played a critical role, uh, TANF replaced the existing welfare mechanism to incentivize jobs and give families a uh, hand that, uh, out, out of poverty. My home state of Kansas has allowed TANF dollars to go to the JAG program, which helps at-risk high school students graduate and get on a successful career path. In Kansas, JAG has a 91% graduation rate and 80% employment rate, uh, both above the national average for JAG students. Now, 25 years later, it's kind of disgraceful that Congress has kicked the can down the road uh, more than 40 times with short-term extensions of TANF rather than a full reauthorization. In fact, TANF has only had one full reauthorization since its inception. And that's why we need to push for some common sense improvements to TANF and the Jobs for Success Act is just that. We all know the good policies in the Jobs for Success legislation. So instead, I want to focus on how we reach families in need and how we relate these policies to them in a meaningful way. You know, we, when we look at a comprehensive reform program like TANA, you know, how do we reach families that think we've abandoned them? I, I know it's really hard to compete with a narrative across the aisle that the larger and larger government handouts solve every problem uh, when clearly they don't. Um, that kind of thinking has created so many problems. Uh, I, I don't know. I know uh, Jody asked a little bit about uh, uh, messaging around uh, the, some of the welfare reform, but I don't know if there's uh, any other thoughts that we have about best practices or ideas to be successful. And, and Matt, I don't know if you you want to chime in on on something, and, and then maybe if either the chairman has something else to talk about, how, how do we communicate uh, the, the better part of having a job versus a handout? Sure. Um, you know, I, I think what we've seen in the sort of post welfare reform era is what works is work. Um, the Democrats are turning that on its head and saying now, well, just give people checks, right? We can wave a wand and end poverty, reduce poverty and all that. And really what they're teeing up is ending poverty by increasing the amount of checks. You know, this is kind of the, the universal basic income uh, scheme that, you know, it sounds good until you start asking some basic questions like, well, how do people respond? Do some people stop working? And even more fundamentally, how the heck are we gonna pay for that? Because some of these things cost literally trillions of additional dollars per year. So somebody's gonna have to pay higher taxes to support these endless checks going to folks at the bottom of the income ladder. And those things send really perverse signals to those folks that are against work. You don't have to work. You don't have to worry about the future. You don't have to be responsible. All those things that I think as parents, as adults, as legislators, you sort of inherently know um, but need to be embedded in federal policy for it to actually be successful. Great, thank you. One of the things that you've got now is certainly the success stories of what welfare reform did. And when we were working on it, we didn't have that. Uh, we didn't know exactly what it was gonna do. And the other thing I would mention is something Chairman Archer mentioned is that the governors uh, were a real, a real allies in this. And now you have, as you mentioned, many of the state by state programs that have shown great success that can be cited because flexibility to the states was part of welfare reform and so i would i would rely on those stories from the states that have been successful and those governors that are supportive to help amplify the message as well all right great thank you and i yield back 